Broken. Wicked. Hello and welcome to The Broken Wicket, the podcast giving cricket tough love in these harsh modern times. My name's Andrew Misner, and first, an apology. All the way back in January, we ran the first episode in a short series analysing the ICC's teams of the decade. We promised you part two within a week. Well, it's been a few months. As I'm sure you know, life and scheduling can get a bit hectic in these COVID times, so apologies for the delay. But here, finally, is part two of the Broken Wickets look at the men's teams of the 2010s. In this episode, myself and Tim Parks take a look at the choices for One Day International and T20 teams of the decade. We begin with a rundown of the official men's One Day International team of the decade, as chosen by the ICC. So, they have given us Rohit Sharma and David Warner opening, Virat Kohli, A.B. de Villiers, Shaki Balhassan and M.S. Dhoni. Then Ben Stokes, Mitchell Stark, Trent Bolt, Imran Tahir, and Lasith Malinga. And Dhoni is captain and wicketkeeper. Interesting. Uh, anything you wildly disagree with there? Bones of contention? I think it's harder to be clear cut on the white ball stuff because there's been a lot of it. A few things stand out. I think I was taken aback at the selection of Malinga because mm. my perception was he played his best cricket pre 2020. But actually, when I had a look at the stats, you'll come to that in a minute, he's the leading wicket taker in this decade and played a lot more matches than anyone else. So fair enough. No England other than Ben Stokes. That is, mm. it was a real decade of two halves for England and, and they maybe suffer from that. Stokes has got a bit of a mixed record in, in 50 over cricket. It took him a long time to get going. And even when he was motoring as a test batsman and bowler of great destructive capabilities, he wasn't in ODIs, but he has you know, rectified that latterly in the decade. And clearly, I think the star power of his role in the 2019 World Cup has probably got him into this team. Harsh on Joss Butler, but then how do you leave out Dhoni, having captained India to a World Cup and, and being so so iconic? I think harsh on Root and Williamson, but again, how do you leave out uh, De Villiers, uh, particularly in this form of the game, and, and Kohli? It's a very strong team. I think if you look at the ICC ODI Player of the Year award, most of these these players figure. Sangakara is actually in there a couple of times. Mm. De Cox in there once, but uh, never a bowler. And I think that says something. If you look at players of the the World Cup 2011, you're Raj Singh. Mm. And I think he could maybe was slightly aggrieved to be not in this team, although it's hard how you fit him in. Uh, maybe his best cricket was the prior decade or, or sort of the, the 10 years up to 2011. Uh, Mitchell Stark in 2015, he's in there. And Kane Williamson uh, again for 2019, who's not in there. But again, hard to live, leave out Coley or De Villiers. Uh, maybe you'd look at the selection of Shakib there. But again, uh, as we've already talked about, uh, tough. So some interesting kind of kind of talking points. Um, but I think there's a lot of this is a format of the game where there's a lot of star power. I think there's one one other thing I'd chuck in, mm. which is Emma Stoney was again a, a era defining captain for India. There can be no doubt about his role, particularly having won that World Cup. Owen Morgan revolutionised an entire country's way of looking at cricket, at a former cricket, um, with with Andrew Strauss and Trevor Bayliss. So, I, d- I ultimately don't think you can get him into this team, and I don't think you can can, can argue with Dhoni. But I think if you're looking at a, a pure captain, I think he at least deserves a, a mention. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, but look, well, what are the what do the stats say about this form of the game? The stats. Good question. Uh, so I'd like to do a caveat for the white ball stuff, ODI and T20I, in that the stats are much less revealing, I find. I think probably because it's hard to get a, a, a decent statistical base, and I don't, don't think the metrics that you can sort by apply so much. I mean, there's so many different things. It's average, it's scoring rate, especially for bowlers. You know, it's not about bowling average. 
it's about economy rate and what times of the innings you bowl and number of wickets. Uh, it's just so Yeah, difficult. I think um, this is one where the, the kind of next level statistics um, yeah. that are kind of done on, on private databases, that, that you know, there's some, some very good blogs out there. But yeah, you, you kind of need some advanced stuff or you need access to quick viz and stuff. So if, you, if you're using Stats Guru, exactly. it's less revealing in this exactly. form of the game. So what I'll do instead is I, I won't read out the full 11s, but I'll explain when I was doing my frivolous and not so frivolous analysis analysis in each form of the game I'll, I'll i'll just throw out some names there so in the batting um ab de villas and Coley make an appearance ross taylor appeared in there now he's got a span of 2011 to 2020 he played 139 odis in that period which is more than mr de villiers uh and he averages 57.76 with a high score of 181 not out uh at a strike rate of 84.51 which is a bit less than Coley at 94 and Tavillis at a, a, a quite ridiculous 111 over 119 games. But yeah, I thought he was perhaps slightly unlucky not to get in, although again, it would be hard to uh, argue to displace any of those players. You know, Rohit Sharma's obviously got a, an outstanding record. Um, Warner speaks for itself with Coley, and we've mentioned Tavillis already. Uh, notice they've gone for the, the two. The two um, all-rounder thing here and maybe if you were going for just one all-rounder Taylor might be one of the men to, to sneak into that conversation what do you think yeah I think that's kind of the spot where if you're if you're quibbling with this team or if you're looking for room to maneuver then it is a team that basically has uh, six frontline bowlers and maybe you can you can move one of Stokes I do think Stokes has that star power and he does have that world cup under the belt I do think it's not He's not had the the longevity of performance in fifty over cricket. I no. think it took him a while to get going, and I think you could say in a team, it probably needs that extra seamer that he that he provides. But on the other hand, a team with Malinga, Bolt, and Stark, you know, maybe isn't going to be relying on him to bowl a full ten anyway. So maybe he he could he could make way. But it's you know based on on that kind of again that show us your medals thing. What what have you actually what have you actually won? Then he he you know, carried a team through a World Cup final and, and that goes a long way. Yeah, uh, the, you know, the batting person, um, one for the future, Babar Azam, has played 77 matches in the latter half of this decade, 2015 to 2020. He averages 55.93 at a strike rate of uh, 87.87 per 100 balls. So, Yeah, I think another one whose who's best is yet to come and may end up straddling sort of two halves of, of two decades. Quite. No, other than that, uh, not many people floating around. In terms of the other departments, again, I think Shaki Pasan does absolutely belong there. You could probably make a uh, an argument for uh, Sankara, <laughs> ironically, to be the wicketkeeper here rather than Dhoni. Brave man who'd leave out uh, MS Dhoni from uh, well, quite. 50 over team of the decade. But, quite. Um, but yeah, I think if... Uh, it's actually, you know, there's, there's a lot of depth at that position in this form of the game with Sankara, with Butler... With uh, Mushfiqur Rahim, uh, with Dukak as well, the average is 44, I think. They're all in a big queue, but that queue is behind MS Tony. Absolutely, absolutely. In terms of the bowling stocks, um, I guess, although he will make an appearance in the T20, uh, Rashid Khan has been pretty outstanding in uh, ODIs as well. How much um, ODI cricket has he, has he played? So Rashid Khan has played 71 ODIs in the last... in. 2015 to 2019 curiously I don't think Afghanistan well they must have played an ODI but he wasn't playing uh, if he did if they did uh, he's taken he's taken 133 wickets in those 71 games at an average of 18.54 and an economy rate of 4.16 which is wow. broadly comparable uh, to Saeed Ajmal someone else who doesn't make the list 71 ODI sounds like a lot, but I think in the grand scheme of things with ODIs, maybe it, it isn't. But uh, And yeah, maybe in, he's more associated with T20 cricket. But um, yeah, that is, that is interesting. And I think we'll probably see a lot more of him in that format in the in the coming years. Exactly. So I think fewer, well, uh, slightly more bones of contention perhaps than there. But I mean, again, it's so difficult to balance performance here. I mean, uh, I was looking for my minimum threshold here of 40 games. Um, and you know, I, I also looked when I was trying to work out how many games I should do at the average number of caps in the decade per player 
who played in the decade, if you see what I mean. So on average, a player who played Test cricket in the the tenors, I guess we're calling them, 9,071 man games were played by 584 players, meaning that the average player played 15 and a half tests over the course of the decade, whatever span they, they were having. Obviously, that includes people who's just caught the decade with the end of career or just caught the decade with the start of their career. Uh, for ODIs... Uh, it actually rises to 31.5 ODIs caps per player. And surprisingly, actually, I found T20 falls back again to test level, 16.6 games per player, which... uh, uh, So I guess what that says is that T20 looks quite stable and a lot of experimentation seems to be done in ODI. Don't know why that is. Maybe ODI... I always thought that T20 would be the the proving ground before we go to ODI, but maybe this reflects the relative status of, of various World Cups or cricket tournaments around the around the globe now. I think there's a real established firmament in T20 cricket as to who's, who's good and who's not, and yeah, it, there it's we hard go. to break in, maybe. There we go. Sure, OK, well, that's so that's given us kind of a rundown of what the, the stats say there. So, you know, some again, I think that's a, a, a strong 11 that the ICC have given us, albeit with a, a few quirks. One final point on that, then. Um Player of the decades. Uh, for again, they've given that to um, to Coley, and again, that's kind of hard to argue with in terms of you know his his performance has been been he's the leading run scorer in this format by a mm. mile. Um, although he's also played a lot more matches, but nearly three thousand runs at, at an average of sixty. Again, for for impacts, um, you could maybe look at what, what Dhoni did as sort of a, a captain, and I think of that that definitive performance in the twenty eleven final. You could maybe talk about De Villiers, but I, I don't think you can go too far away from uh, from Virat Kohli there. No, absolutely not. All right, then. Well, should we move on to the... You, you, you teed us up nicely yeah, did, for yeah. T20 <laughs> a moment ago. So let's, let's look at T20s then. Bit of a funny one, this, because obviously international cricket isn't really the defining form of cricket for T20s, which no. is you'd almost get... You'd want to see sort of the, the IPL team of the decade mm. uh, as, as more definitive. Well, I wouldn't want since, to. Well, let's save that for another day. Uh, particularly because, yeah, you know, there's there's not always so many T20 internationals, although that's that's increasing. The, the World Cups are a bit all over the place in terms of scheduling. Mm. You know, a, a strong team again with a, a lot of lot of star power. Um, I think something that's worthy of note again on this front is the fact that the ICC hasn't been awarding a T20 International Player of the Year for men's cricket. They've been, um, they have been for all the other forms of the game, and they have been for the women. But uh, each year, the ICC awards only have a T20 International Performance of the Year, mm. which throws up some interesting names. Uh, Richard Levy of South Africa, I'm looking at mm. you. Yeah, anyway, the ICC 11 then. Rohit Sharma again, mm. Chris Gale, Aaron Finch, Virat Kohli, A.B. de Villiers, Glenn Maxwell, interesting, mm. uh, M.S. Dhoni, captain and keeper, Kieran Pollard, mm. Rashid Khan, Jasper <laughs> Bumrah, and Lasith Malinga. Very strong team. A lot of uh, kind of IPL star power there. And McCullum, maybe a bit high or maybe slightly past his peak in this decade. Just Butler, again, another keeper batsman, maybe on the outside looking in. Yeah. Uh, Imran Tahir was obviously, uh, we've seen in another format. He was on the uh, he was on the long list for T20 cricketer of the decade. Uh, but I guess he was competing with Rashid Khan. You know anything? Uh, anything leap out at you there in terms of uh, controversy or, or talking points? No, again, not really. I think it's mostly right. I'm not sure about their sele- their selection of all rounders. Really, I'm, I'm trying to work out what criteria well, they're th- just trying to second guess guess their criteria. But I don't know. Um, I think I do. I do yeah. think it's a team, and obviously it's not, it's not really a bowlers format. But it, I do think it's a team that looks slightly light on bowling. In that Malinga, yeah, naturally, Bumra. He's almost the modern Malinga in the way that he's sort of the, the ultimate death bowler. Rashid Khan, yeah, second half of the decade, but yep. uh, you know, incredible. Uh, but then, if this team were actually to take the field, they'd be getting up. Um, they'd need overs out of a combination of Pollard, Maxwell, and then I guess you know potentially Chris Gale or someone. Maxwell's record isn't bad, but I do think it's it's a big ask for this team to be relying on him and Pollard to basically be frontline bowlers. Well, what do you reckon? Yeah, I think it's too much. I mean, I think they have so many off days that it's it's hard to say. I mean, from a from a batting point of view, Maxwell is up there, and Pollard is 
in the they're both in the top fifty. Let's say that I think Maxwell just makes it to the top twenty five, um, but uh, Pollard's down there. This is going by average again and again. It's not you know uh, batting average is not the best way of of talking about this really. But this way no. Like, and before yeah. and, and clearly in in T twenty it's. Yeah, you're looking at strike rate. You're looking at the position they're batting in. If you go back a couple of episodes, we were talking about the the oddity that all the best batsmen in in T20s either open or bat at three, and so picking some of these guys lower down the order is is not necessarily what they would be doing. Well, yeah, I do I do think selecting Maxwell and Pollard if they're only creeping into the top fifty is a bit odd. Like Pollard's clearly there because of star power. Like clearly he was a, a sort of defining talent of of the. Of the IPL as a whole. Yeah. I, mean, but, um, I have less of a problem with Maxwell. I've just ordered the list by strike rate and Maxwell is third on that list and I've set a very generous minimum matches played to that of 20. He's out, you know, his strike rate, he scored 1,687 runs at 157.95 strike rate. Whereas, so that's fine. I mean, you know, his average is in the top 25 but that is an extraordinary strike rate so i am actually okay with maxwell although i do have reservations about his bowling um pollard however i mean his average is 30 he's only scored a thousand runs which is a lot less than other people on this list uh and he's been playing for most of the decade 2012 2020 and his strike rate is uh, i can tell you exactly 50th on the list of people i mean there's lots of well, some random people in there, but his strike rate is only a hundred, only a hundred and thirty-eight and a half, which is a good step change down from the top. So I, I, I wonder if this is one where, you know, he's let down by modern stats, and that average is not a great indicator. And obviously, this is what's available available to us. But average is not a great indicator for someone who bats middle order in T Twenty because they often come in late. Strike rate is very useful, and it, and it's interesting that he he's a much better performer there. Because obviously it's often about impact, but you need some of those next level statistical yeah. analyses, which we don't have access to. I do still think that I sort of probably agree with you. They've gone a bit here for star power rather than um, overall consistency. And yeah, the, the the West Indies have done well in T20 World Cups, so and maybe that that counts for something. Um, I think he he's one where you know that you you can ask some ask some interesting questions. If you look at the T Twenty World Cups in the decade, there there were uh, there were a few. Shane Watson had a blinder in twenty twelve. He was player of the tournament and top run scorer. Mm-hmm. Um, Ajantha Mendes was the top wicket taker, and there's the player who really fell off a cliff once people mm. figured him out. Kohli was the, the star in twenty fourteen in terms of he was the, he was the player of the tournament and the top run scorer. Uh, Imran Tahir was the top wicket taker in that tournament a- alongside Asan Malik of Netherlands. So that's wow. an interesting quote for you. Uh, and in 2016, again, player of the tournament was Kohli. Mohamed Nabi was the top wicket taker, if I'm reading my notes right. Yeah. I think what's interesting there is, again, if you look at um, T20 World Cups and you know actual winning performances, you yeah, the West Indies have that 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 strong record and maybe that mm. that goes a long way i think if you look at for example Kohli figures twice as player of the tournament but india haven't won either of those tournaments they you have to go back to 2007 for that so does should you although he is a you know clearly a, a defining cricketer should should you be counting a bit against him in selection given that given that west indies have won managed to go out there and win win two in this decade should there be more of their players in there mm. uh should sri lanka feature more heavily given how well they did in in 2014 you know how much how much weight are we putting in well in performances in in big big situations well that's the thing i mean um i suppose this is why you know we're going to talk about associate nations another time if i don't apply any country filters to the t20 and still apply a minimum number of games. I've got some people with extraordinary records here. Um, but, uh, yeah, you've got to look at the level of play. There's pressure in any game. And that, you know, uh, other than very rare situations like a final, you know, there's equal pressure for, for players, whether it's, you know, match two in a five-match series or match four. It, it, it's just hard to say, but... I mean, yeah. I, don't know. I guess. I guess what I'm saying is this: I, I've been giving a lot of credit for, to Dhoni, particularly in ODIs, for uh, leading India to a, to a World Cup and then playing a blinder in the final uh, and winning it. And you know, Sangakara 
similarly in a T20 World Cup final played a played a blinder and, yeah. and brought his team home. So how you know how much credit on, on the goes captain. there? Should he be in the team over over Coley? Say, I mean, no, you shouldn't drop Billat Coley, but <laughs> it, you know it's. This stuff's worth thinking about, I think. Yeah, on the captaincy one, it's hard to have it both ways because we've said previously you've got to pick the best team then select a captain. So I'm not sure how much stock we could put by saying you've led your side to World Cup. I, I think I'm not, I'm not sure if he was captain in that, but I think it was more m- meant sort of metaphorically in that he uh, he played the sort of winning hand. Uh, no, it was Malinga was captain for that. So there you go. That's another, another hmm. string in his bow in terms of selection for this team. Yeah, I think I think it's it's an odd an odd one given that um, as I say, T twenty internationals aren't are somewhat play second fiddle to franchise T twenty. I think it's interesting that they chose Rashid Khan as the T twenty I cricketer of the decade. Uh, I think that's a, I mean, I'm delighted for him and he's a yeah. wonderful player. I think that's a huge call given that relatively late to the party decade wise and how much of that is based on his performances for Afghanistan. I mean, Afghanistan, you know, really rose up through the ranks through their T20 performances. But on the other hand, you know, there are some players in, in there on that short list, like, like uh, Rohit Sharma, say, like, well, Lassif Malinga, for example, who've done it at the business end of big tournaments. But then maybe that's not, as I said earlier, that's not Khan's fault if the rest you know, of the team are. I guess we'll but I, th- I just, I just think it's a, it's a, it's a it's a huge call to say that he is the T20I cricketer of the decade ahead well, of say Coley or De Villiers or let, someone else. Let me read you his stats, uh, his all round stats. Um, Please do. And well, let's do bowling because he's uh, uh, listed as a bowler, and I will tell you how it compares to to everyone else as well. Rashid Khan, AFG slash ICC, uh, of course. played twenty fifteen to twenty twenty forty eight matches, which is yep yeah, pretty. Pretty good. Not as many as the people who pack out the top ten, but I guess that's opportunity for Afghanistan rather than anything else. Uh, he has taken eighty nine wickets, and bear in mind the next highest wicket taker is, has seventy five wickets. Uh, so there's a much of a gap from Rashid Khan number one to Shakib Al Hassan number two, as there is from Shakib Al Hassan down to Jasper Brumra in 8th position with 59. Uh, but get this, uh, Rashi Khan has uh, 48 matches, 48 innings, bowled 183 overs, one maiden, well, hey. Uh, he has taken 89 wickets at, wait for it, an average of 12.62. And the to illustrate the... Next averages are twenty, nearly twenty-one for Shaki Bel Hassan, nearly twenty-one for Malinga, Chris Jordan, sixty-six wickets, twenty-five, Southey twenty-five, Dockrell twenty-three, Imran Tahir fifteen. I guess this is spinners, you see. But let's look at economy rate as well. Rashid Khan six point one four. Uh the next and if I order the whole thing by economy, I'm applying here a minimum uh, matches played of twenty, and let's just eyeball it and filter out the bowlers of uh, big nations. Yeah, Rashid Khan is also number one on that list from major nations as well. Actually, no, sorry, apart from Sunil Narine, who's taken 52 wickets uh, at 21 at an economy rate of six. But basically, of the people in the ones who are in the broad conversation, Rashid Khan beats them on average, beats them on economy and beats them on wickets. So I'd say there's a strong argument to be a bowl of the decade, but I agree, I'm not sure. And I find it very hard to assess whether uh, that stretches to being T20 cricketer of the decade. Well, I think what you, you, you've you won me over in a way. I think what you've shown to me is that he's perfectly perfectly deserving. I, I mm. take it back. I mean, I was never never saying he hadn't played well, but I just as the defining cricketer of the decade, I, I was about to suggest that they just didn't want to give them all to uh, Virat Kohli, and they thought this would make them look cool. <laughs> but but um, no, you've won me over in a in a in a format actually where spinners have really come to the fore. He's he's maybe the best of them. So fair play, well done, Rashid Khan. Go. The power of stats. The uh, power of stats. The power of stats compels you. So yeah, um, let let it does compel me. Let's sum this up. So look, I'd say what have we learned today? Uh, I'd say mainly that there is an eternal frustration of trying to impose statistical analysis on cricket, let's say other sports. I mean, cricket is obviously rich in stats. 
you know, ball by ball records go back to 2003, I think. That you know, it's really rich stuff, but there, I think the style of play and the patterns of play, uh, really perhaps sometimes don't lend themselves to the kind of looking at who players of the decade are and so on and so forth. Look at something that stats rich like baseball, you know, you've got thousands millions of data points there on players they they play games so often cricket careers can be very fleeting and even you know at um if you're playing a 60 match test career or white ball stuff 60 match career there's actually limited stats and i think you're much more uh, uh you know at, at the mercy of capricious luck i'd say what do you think i think that it's you know, it's a funny old game. Um, I think that uh, you're right that there's there's a wealth of stats here, and you can slice and dice them in, this, in different ways, and that's part of the fun. Uh, you know, what I've trying to be been trying to do is to reflect some of the narrative a little bit more and, and the way people are perceived. And it's funny how some of that really just doesn't stack up at all in terms exactly. of, and and a lot of it actually does. You know, I I was prepared for these teams to be uh, total rubbish. <laughs> the ICC put out, and actually. You know they're probably about ninety percent there. Yeah. Um, well done them. But we will we'll see whether the same holds true on the women's side of the game. Well, exactly. Final final point of contention here. When does the decade start? Why have they done it twenty eleven to twenty twenty? That's not a decade. It is ten years, but it's not a decade. Did they just forget to do it last year, and they've tried to cover their asses? <laughs> I. I don't have the, the the mental energy to get into that debate. <laughs> when when did the century start? I I'm just going to count everything. I I was born in a year ending in two. I'm just going to count everything from then. All decades end in years ending exactly, in two. Exactly, because don't forget you had lots of fun people at the turn of the millennium saying, well, actually the millennium didn't sort of start in 2001. Really, if you look at it from a or 1999 from a biblical when Jesus was born point of view. Oh, for, you know, yeah. Who knows? Who knows? But they've done a team of the decade. There it is. We've dissected it. We're done. And we we have and in, in dissecting it, I think we've killed it. So let's let's end it. There. Yeah. Listeners, don't write in. We've had enough. <laughs> All that remains for us to say is thank you very much for listening. Uh, I have been Tim Part at Batting Tim on Twitter. I am Andrew Misner at AJ Misner on Twitter. Excellent. If you want to uh, consume more of our content please do go to our website where you can find all the podcasts now available uh, for your listening pleasure. That is thebrokenwicket.com. You can also find us on all the social medias. You can find us on Twitter. At Broken Wicket. You can find us on Facebook. At Broken Wicket. You can find us on Instagram. At Broken Wicket. And, of course, on YouTube. The Broken Wicket. Excellent. If uh, you haven't yet done so, please do uh, subscribe to this podcast and give us a rating on iTunes or whatever podcast platform of choice you use. Uh, It really does help us get up the listings and get this content out to a broader range of people. But for now, that's it from me and that's it from Andrew. We will see you very soon, I hope, to discuss more in the cricketing world, more stats and much less of Teams of the Decade, I hope. From me, Tim Part, goodbye. And from me, goodbye. See you soon. T. Broken. Wicked. Wicked.